Okay, it is now 7 p.m. Central Time and we are going to get started. So thank you again for joining our webinar on how to use Twitter as a medical student going into neurology. All participants are muted and if you're having any technical difficulties, we recommend disconnecting from the webinar and reconnecting. Connect using computer audio or by the dial in option. You do not need to use both. If you continue to have technical difficulties, send a message through the chat feature and we will try to assist you. For questions to the panelists, please use the Q&A feature, not chat, and we will answer them throughout. I am pleased to introduce our panel members for today. Our, moder our moderator is Dr. Aaron Zelikovich. Dr. Zelikovich is a second year neurology resident at Wild Cornell in New York City. He is one of the creators of the hashtag NeuroTwitter Network and hashtag How to Neuro Twitter Guide. He enjoys using Twitter to build his neurology community and create more content for trainees at all levels in neurology. Outside of Twitter, you can find him on his quest to find the best bagel and locks in New York City. Our panelists are Dr. Eric Lawson and Dr. Justine Kerr. Dr. Lawson is a first year neurocritical care fellow at Emory University in Atlanta, Georgia. He completed his neurology residency training at Emory, where he also served as chief resident. Dr. Lawson first joined Twitter as an educational resource, but he has grown to embrace the multimodal possibilities for its use in networking, education, research, and advocacy. Dr. Kerr is a neurology intern at UT Southwestern Medical Center in Dallas, Texas. She became involved in social media and neurology as a founding member of the NMATCH 2021 initiative and has been a contributor for the hashtag How to Neuro Twitter team. She is currently a member of the Social Media Experts Panel for the American Academy of Neurology, which seeks to promote key initiatives of the AAN and the fields of neurology on Twitter. Dr. Yuzelikovich, I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Allison and Lucy, for inviting us. And thank you to all the attendees for making it out tonight. We are going to be more of like a low key talk, um, kind of talking about the nuts and bolts of Twitter. And I brought along two experts, Dr. Lawson and Dr. Kerr, who are Twitter extraordinaires of their own to help me kind of talk about what are what is Twitter, what is Twitter used for, um, what are types of interactions are there, we're going to talk a little bit about the two versions of our guide that we created. Many of you hopefully are going into res or applying for residency soon. And we wanted to let you guys know the resources that we have to help you connect with residency programs as well. I know that mentorship on Twitter is a hot topic. There's no single way to do it. So we're just going to provide some suggestions. And then we're going to show you some examples of medical education as well on Twitter that maybe you guys can kind of follow and take note of to help with your neuro neurology training as you go being a medical student. But even me as a resident as well, I use it in my residency program and helping to review stuff as well. Um, thanks, Aaron, uh, for the introduction, um, and Allison and, and Lucy as well. Um, so just, I mean, we're starting off just on super basic things here, right? Um, so a lot of these things as um, medical students and they, you know, being a, of our younger generation, you guys are probably pretty savvy as far as social media networks and um, things like that go. Um, so I'm, I'm sure if most of you are here, you probably generally know what uh, Twitter is and, and how to um, and, and what a, a tweet is um, kind of more specifically, you know, what is neuro Twitter um, and essentially you know, it's a community of people within uh, Twitter um, that uh, has come together under a, a unifying hashtag and um, really allows people uh, who are interested in neurology, neuroscience, neurosurgery um, to have unifying discussions using this, this common hashtag. Um, and really the most important thing about all this is um, Twitter itself is, is free, uh, which is great. Um, we can go next slide. Um, so again, uh, super basic uh, here, but 
um, as far as how to uh, actually create your account. Um, you just go in, there's nothing specifically special about um, Neuro Twitter. You don't have to make a, a separate account. It's just Twitter itself. Um, I think the important thing that I would add here is when you're making your Twitter account, um, think about what you want it to be for. Um, so when I first joined Twitter, um, I was an intern um, and I joined because one of my attendings, uh, who is a uh, popular neuroradiologist on um, Twitter for his uh, weekly cases, um, convinced me to join him because he wanted more followers for his cases uh, and he wanted people um, to follow along and learn from uh, his cases. So I was like, sure, I'll do it. And he was the only person I followed for like six months. Um, and after that, I began to realize like there's a bunch of other content out there. And so because I just had this super basic account that I didn't really have um, built out besides like no picture and just following one person, um, I decided to make my account a purely professional account. Um, and so I, I encourage you to think about how you want to structure um, your Twitter account. And um, do you want to use it for personal use? Do you want to follow college friends? Do you want to follow um, famous actors, politicians, things like that? I decided not to. I wanted to keep it purely medical um, and keep things uh, within a, a professional realm um, so that I didn't have those added distractions within my feed. We can go next slide. Um, and then again, just how you interact um, on Twitter and with other people on Twitter. And this is um, can really expand into a, a more in-depth uh, conversation that we can um, have once we finish up some of the slides. But um, you know, there's simple ways to either um, interact with tweets or um, re, I'm, I'm trying not to use the word retweet uh, as I describe how to retweet, um, but the, the ways that you interact with uh, other people's posts, other people's tweets, um, you can do as basic as how I started in my first six months on Twitter, which was I purely viewed things. I didn't even like a tweet. Um, and then from there, I kind of grew to I'd start liking things. And then I started retweeting things. And then um, occasionally I would comment on a few things. Um, and then from there, you can kind of grow and decide, you know, is this something where I want to create my own content? Um, is this something where um, I just want to uh, be somebody who helps spread uh, other people's content? Um, or do you just kind of want to watch from the sidelines, which is totally fine um, and a, a common thing that a lot of people do. Um, so as you're thinking about how you're structuring your Twitter account, um, I also encourage you to think about, you know, what level do you want to participate in, in Twitter? And for some people, a time constraint uh, really um, can limit some of these things. And so maybe it's just an occasional viewing of tweets and not really um, liking or retweeting. Um, or maybe you want to dive fully in and be a heavy content creator um, and make a lot of uh, unique posts that a lot of people are going to gonna share um, to try for either educational purposes, networking purposes, et cetera. Can you go next slide? And some of you might be wondering why this is important, why you should get a Twitter, you know, how Neuro Twitter came about. Um, so we wanted to go over the timeline and kind of show you how things started as far as the how the Neuro Twitter and the Neuro Twitter network came about. Um, so this impacted me significantly because I am currently a neurology intern. So when all of this came about, I was actually a fourth year medical student applying into neurology. Um, and last year, back in March, that's when COVID came about. It really significantly impacted medicine and the medical field in general. Um, but as a medical student that was applying for residency at the time, our interviews became entirely virtual. 
Um, and that really took away the physical face-to-face -face interaction and the networking opportunities that we would have by visiting programs and talking to people in person. And I think that really shook a lot of us uh, in the beginning, early on in spring. And many of us turned to Twitter and turned to social media as a way to reach out and express our frustrations and things that we were worried about going into the upcoming application cycle. And uh, we found a really amazing community that was already that was already developing, that was already there. Uh, the Neuro Twitter community welcomed so many of us, uh, including Eric and Aaron, who were on there, and they reached out and they supported um, not only me but my fellow applicants as we navigated this really unique cycle into the virtual application season. Um, and that's when a lot of really cool things started to come into play. For example, the creation of the NMatch 2021 account um, for those of you applying into neurology this year it's known as the NMatch 2022 account. Um, they have an Instagram and Twitter, but that was a really cool project that I was able to take part in and join a few of my fellow applicants in creating a centralized system for a lot of applicants to kind of look at residency programs uh, in a virtual setting um, and network and communicate and ask questions that they had questions about and things that they had questions about. Um, and also along the same times, we ended up creating the How to Neuro Twitter and the Neuro Twitter network. Um, and we launched that uh, ultimately in August of 2020, and it was really successful. And as you can see here, uh, with the launch, you've probably, if you've been on Twitter, you've probably seen many of our tweets. Um, we're a very, very large group of individuals um, from programs far and wide that have come together to create this really grassroots led resource uh, for everyone who's interested in neurology, who wants to pursue neurology as a career or is already established in the field of neurology. And we wanted to create this awesome, amazing network in the virtual sphere uh, for everyone to take part in and be a part of. So this is what the NeuroTwitter network um, originally looks like. Uh, it was a PowerPoint. Uh, made for trainees, by trainees. This was the original version that launched in August of 2020, so a little over a year ago. Um, in the How to Neuro Twitter and Neuro Tw Twitter Network Guide, uh, we included you know, our team, which is 20 plus individuals, we included the details on creating a Twitter account, how to personalize it, some of those things that you've seen just now um, that Aaron and Eric went over. Also some do's and don'ts. Uh, we included mentorship opportunities, different organizations that you should follow uh, and subspecialties as well. Um, so tons of educational uh, opportunities, um, opportunities to join in on Morning Report, Dr. Berkowitz's med tutorials. If you've been on Twitter, those are really amazing things to follow and, and to learn from. And also we created a comprehensive list of uh, neuro Twitter accounts, residency programs. Uh, we had this full database and that's something that we've actually continued to work on and expand upon uh, this year. So we now have a uh, how to Neuro Twitter 2.0 that has come out this year, which has been really great uh, and informative. Um, yeah, just to kind of um, continue on with what uh, Justine was saying, I think one of the the biggest things and what we had um, all sort of noticed is there wasn't, if you've been on Twitter, you know how hard it is to figure out like who to follow. Like you can search certain terms, um, you can search, uh, you know, neurology, you're, it gives you these suggestions, but sometimes the suggestions you're like, you know, I, uh, I follow Aaron and it suggests for me to follow like Kanye West. And you're like, what? that doesn't make sense. Um, and so we wanted like a central location for people to go to and say, Hey, I want to figure out who are all the residency programs on Twitter? Who are, um, you know, program directors? Where are their accounts? Um, and so we wanted to create a central location for that, um, which, you know, goes a little bit outside the, the scope of Twitter itself. Um, but with uh, the past, um, you know, coming up on two years now, being as crazy as it was, um, we thought it was an important thing. And so um, we've continued to um, expand uh, upon that. 
Um, thanks uh, largely and um, mostly in part to um, to Aaron's uh, contributions. And so um, the the second iteration of this guide really kind of expanded out into different resources and into subsets such as stroke Twitter, um, specific resources for child neurology, um, the uh, database of uh, residency programs, um, and then, you know, even information now on applying to fellowship, which, um, you know, as somebody who just went through uh, that process would have been wonderful uh, to, to have um, a social media based um, information on that. The AAN has excellent information on their websites about going through fellowship and things, but interacting through and um, other people to follow, fellowship programs to follow um, on uh, social media is, uh, again, a difficult thing to, to track down um, in, the, in the neurology community. Um, you can go next slide. Um, and so this is just an example um, of the some of the different programs that you'll uh, come across. And so um, it can be anything from, you know, in, in the um, upper left here, uh, Barrow uh, Neurological um, is really a, a official Twitter account for the Institute itself, um, you know, over to specific uh, residency programs or, um, you know, Northwestern in the in the bottom right corner there, um, a, a Twitter account that's actually run by uh, the residents themselves. Um, and so really across the nation, there's different variations um, in who runs the account. And I think it's an important thing for you to know, right? So the the tweets coming from the, the official Barrow Neuro um, account probably isn't going to include day-to-day -day life of the residents. And so it don't, I, I would encourage you to not necessarily be like, oh, Barrow Neuro, you know, doesn't uh, post like fun things that their residents are doing. Well, it's because it's not the intent of that account. Whereas if the Northwestern account is posting, you know, fun things that their residents are doing, um, while I'm, I'm sure some of my friends from, from Northwestern would say they do have more fun there. Um, I'm sure it, it's not, uh, it's not in, um, in a way that other programs aren't. Um, we can go to the next slide. Justine, you're muted. Sorry. Um, so again, with the How to Neuro Twitter Guide and our Neuro Twitter Network 2.0, um, one of the great things that has come out of it is that we have developed this incredible resource that can give you a list of the residency program accounts that you might be interested in. And again, as Eric mentioned, we have a whole fellowship section now. And so hopefully we'll be able to expand on that in the future as well. Um, but what's been really great is we've had a lot of contributors from a lot of different residency programs, both adult and pediatric residencies, um, different cities, different states, all over. Um, provide information regarding to their residency program accounts. Um, we have direct links to those Twitter accounts. You can simply just go down the list, look for the program you're interested in and see if they have a Twitter account available through the guide that we have. Um, and if there is a residency program that might be missing, um, you can just tweet at one of us, tweet at Aaron and let us know and we can definitely add it to our uh, resource. Um, so this is an example, for example, if you went down into New York and you were interested in some New York programs, you could go and look at the state, you can see which city um, that you would be interested in, and you can see, for example, um, let's say Aaron is applying for Cornell, he could go into New York, New York, and see Cornell here and see that they have a program Twitter account, and it would be listed here. Um, and that would be the same for any other program that might have a program Twitter account or a residency specific Twitter account. And as was mentioned before, there is a difference between those two. Some can be official accounts, which might not necessarily tweet a uh, as personalized information regarding the residency program or the residents themselves. Uh, and then some of them like the residency Twitters may go more into detail on the day-to-day -day life of what the residents are doing um, and more detail on the residency programs. 
here's another page. Um, for example, if you went down to Ohio, you could see the cities, you could see the exact programs in Ohio and whether or not they have a residency Twitter available. And again, if there is a Twitter account that is affiliated with a residency program that happens to be missing, just let one of us know and we're more than happy to add it to the list. Um, so one of the, I, I think one of the questions that had um, come up uh, as well pertains to this slide. And so I'll kind of um, start to talk about it is, you know, mentoring trainees on Twitter and how to, you know, interact with mentors or, or identify mentors. So some of you may be coming from institutions that don't have neurology programs. Um, I think one of the coolest things that I found in the past um, year and a half, um, especially uh, with the pandemic is um, just how willing people are to um, interact with you on, on Twitter one. Um, and even, uh, you know, if you have, you know, something, a project you want to do, a um, you see some research that they're doing that you're interested in, um, how willing people are to uh, consider, you know, working with you on on a paper or um, on a, a research project. Um, I think as a medical student, it's intimidating um, to uh, think about interacting with, um, you know, even residents, um, let alone uh, attendings um, on Twitter. Um, what I would encourage you to do is just kind of look at the individual person and their account. Um, if it's somebody who's actively, you know, posting things that are educational and, um, you know, at a, a basic level, you liking their tweet, you retweeting their tweet, um, isn't they, it, honestly, they, they will enjoy it because they want their content to be seen by, by others. Um, but it, it's just the most basic level of interacting. And then maybe, you know, you'll start commenting and, and say, you know, you could ask a question or um, you can uh, expand, um, you know, if you have something additional to add to the um, educational topic, you can um, expand on it. And so um, don't be afraid to comment on people's posts, their public posts, and they're putting them out there for, um, for a reason. Um, and so I think, understanding that it's okay to interact with some of these people um, on, on Twitter is um, is the the most basic part at sort of open opening the door to a, a conversation. I, th I think you know a lot of um, the program directors who are very vocal on Twitter uh, are likely open to you you know if you don't have a neurology program, um, asking them specific questions, even if you do have a, a neurology program and you're interested in that um, program director's um, program, asking them, you know, questions, uh, commenting on, on posts that they make about their program um, and asking a public question. Um, and so I, I would encourage you to um, interact with the posts that are there. Um, there is somewhat of a, you know, fine line. Um, you know, sending uh, copious amounts of private messages and things like that um, probably would be, you know, something that I would consider crossing that line. Um, you you want to remember as, as much as you're able to, to keep a somewhat professional setting to all this. And, um, you know, the way I would encourage you is with the like private messages is think about it like, would you send this in an email? Because that's essentially what you're doing. You're sending a private message to somebody. And so ask yourself, would I be willing to email this person that question? But if it's the public post, go ahead and ask them a question. Um, so we can go next slide on this one. Um, this is just an example of Dr. Um, Jones and some of the uh, posts he has made. Um, and, you know, even it's, I think, meant to be a little, um, comical, um, but it's he, he uh, is going through um, some of the basics of how to evaluate a, a, a neurology patient. Um, and in five tweets, he, he tells you how to do it. Um, so read his his tweets and you don't need to do a, a neurology residency. <laughs> um, we can go next slide. Awesome, thank you, Eric and Justine. So this is something I created from a, for a recent talk that I gave, and it was 
well received, so I thought I would go over it tonight as well. Um, and this is kind of geared more towards applicants, but you can definitely use these guidelines, whatever stage of training you are, whether it's a first or second year medical student or a first or second year trainee as well. Um, number one, tweeting more does not make you a better tweeter. A lot of people come into Twitter as a newbie and feel like, oh, if I send 100 tweets a day, maybe one will um, become really big and people will like it. The reality is no. Um, a lot of the tweets that are quality material, whether it's information, whether it's content, whether it's a story, tend to do better and have a lasting impact. I know different number two, tweets are essentially part of your resume CV. Remember, as Eric said, this is public. Um, you unfortunately are in a world that social media hasn't really been discussed in terms of residency programs. And there is not a consensus statement about how social media is used in residency recruitment, is used in application reviews. Different programs probably do different things, but assume that any tweet you send that you send is part of your resume and CV. I don't know if Justine or Eric disagree or agree with that. I'm interested to hear and we can. Yeah, I, I would say just purely from a um, professional say, if, it, if it's something that you're not willing to, um, you know, have people know, you know, as a, um, as a doctor that um, you have put out there, um, then I wouldn't do it. Uh, you know, as we, as we know from um, the, uh, you know, news and, and things over the, the past decade, these uh, tweets and things like that, even if you delete them, they live on forever. Um, and so think very carefully um, about posting things um, and things that if you're hitting a point where you're asking yourself, is this inappropriate to post? Just don't post it. Um, the, but I, as far as like, you know, our program's gonna, um, look through your Twitter accounts and, um, you know, is that going to impact them? I, I think Aaron hit it on the head and just nobody really knows. Um, but, you know, I, I think I will say having been involved in a, um, uh, in the application um, process for, for our residency program last year. Um, there's a lot of applications uh, and uh, getting through all the applications and giving the applications themselves an in-depth um, review uh, without even uh, considering their social media accounts um, is uh, time in, enough time in and of itself. Yeah, my, uh, my general rule of thumb for Twitter, especially if you're using Twitter specifically for the purpose of networking on uh, through neuro Twitter is if you can't say it to an attending in person, you may want to reconsider tweeting whatever it is you're about to tweet. Awesome. Different people have different um, perspectives, but yeah everyone will tell you a little bit differently. So take everything we say with a grain of salt as well. Um, negativity will only hurt your chances and best to avoid. Twitter is not designed to be a really intellectual, high pie in the sky kind of discussion. And if you disagree with something that's totally reasonable, but I don't know that Twitter is the right way to kind of have that conversation with someone you may have never met in real life. There are also Twitter bots and people that are designed to just rile people up. So don't try and get sucked into that. Follow programs you're interested in, not everyone, right? So like you are from Chicago and you really like Chicago and you want to stay in the Midwest and there's no way you would ever see yourself moving to California and you're not even going to apply to California schools, then there's really no reason to follow them unless you want to know the general layout of neurology programs. Um, but don't let your Twitter feed get overwhelmed by every single hundred, I think there are a hundred, over a hundred residency programs on Twitter now, um, which is amazing, but you definitely don't need to follow all them to make sure you're not missing anything. I also Aaron, believe, yeah. Real quick, just to um, tag on to um, that point that I, I think this goes into just curating your accounts into what you want it to be. So yes, for the specific programs, um, but also if you have specific interests in neurology, um, follow only those accounts. Um, you don't need to follow, you know, I'm in neurocritical care. Um, no, 
offense to Aaron, who is going to be an excellent neuromuscular provider um, when he does his fellowship. But I don't follow a lot of neuromuscular related accounts because it's not going to affect my um, day to day. And it's not things where I'm trying to pull a lot of educational content out of. And so I want when I look at my feed, I want to see things that are quick, easy and accessible for me and relevant to me. Yeah, we actually have really interesting data that we'll hopefully be presenting soon about the different um, specialties on NeuroTwitter. And there definitely seems to be a trend for more specialties and others that are definitely using it. And curating your feed is really important. Speaking of that, steady activity is better than spurts. If you only use Twitter once a month and you spend a couple hours on it, it's not going to be helpful. The goal is to use it every day or every other day to kind of spend a couple minutes on it just to get a sense of what is going on in the current moment. And it's very good of like, getting tidbits rather than trying to eat a whole meal at once. Six, don't worry about numbers of followers and following. It's some people have thousands of followers. Some people have 10 followers. As long as you're getting what you need out of Twitter, then that's the right amount of followers and following. So don't feel that anyone is judging you about that or anyone really cares. Um, it's just, it's what it's meant to be for you and different people use it for different things. Be sure to bookmark tweets that are frequently asked questions. I was talking to Justine and Eric earlier that I had a case of muscle twitching and I referenced Dr. Jones' Dr. Jones's tweet from about two or three months prior that I bookmarked and helped me create a differential diagnose, diagnosis that ended up being the correct answer when we did the test. So there's some really high content um, tutorials and information by multiple people on NeuroTwitter now and they're definitely things to bookmark for the future. As we talked about earlier in the session, there's different levels of interacting with tweets based on where you are in your comfort level with Twitter. Liking tweets is great, um, but if you really wanna engage in the conversation, the best way to do it is to retweet and comment and really add your voice and advocating for your patients and congratulating your colleagues and celebrating all the great things that are happening on NeuroTwitter. And as we mentioned earlier, everything is public once you post, so think twice before posting and then a third time as well. After three times you've edited, you've looked at it, there's no reason grandpa, grandma would find offense or doctor uh, reflex hammer, your attending neurologist sees this, they won't care. But even more importantly, your patients. I think we forget that a lot. Patients have access to your Twitter as well. And there's a lot of really necessary information you need to learn about how to craft a, a tweet appropriately that's HIPAA compliant. Um, and then Last but not least, Eric kind of alluded to this prior, um, but I, I always like to say this caveat. Residencies are only gonna put their positives on NeuroTwitter. No one is gonna post that 90 hour work week or, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't wanna say personal things cause that could be bad, but um, you know, we all, every program has its positives and negatives. And that's always something to remember and don't let a program sway you one way or the other only on the positives. So definitely still do your homework. This is just one tool to help evaluate a residency program. Your interviews are important. Talking to the residents are important. Talking to your colleagues, talking to people you know at that program. Don't let NeuroTwitter be your only source of information. And this was actually on our first guide. Um, I believe Justine actually helped create this, if I remember correctly. It's been over a year ago. But this just goes into more in-depth things that we talked about. Um, but it's available on the NeuroTwitter version one that we'll send out the links at the end of this thing as well that you guys can go back and tag. Or not tag, but um, reference in the future as well. Aaron only speaks in, in Twitter terminology now, so. Um, when he talks about references, he talks about tags. Uh, well, so, uh, you're a Google scholar like Dr. Lawson here, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, so this, uh, again, just example of, um, within the neuro Twitter network guide and overall, um, you're going to find a lot of, uh, medical education, um, accounts, um, the a couple of really big ones during the pandemic, um, if you have just joined Twitter, um, have been uh, Dr. Berkowitz and Dr. Milligan. Um, they were uh, two of the, the first ones um, to start doing like heavy teaching um, on 
uh, on um, Twitter. Um, and that has really like exploded since um, since then to where, um, you know, I, I occasionally I'll, I'll throw up some uh, tutorials still um, the a lot of my 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 personal um, I am I'm, I'm very proud I got my own program director to join and now she's on like uh, case, I think 170 or something ridiculous of EEG cases. Um, and so it's really helped to explode, um, some of, some of these people who were the initial people doing education on Twitter has helped to explode, um, the, uh, educational content on, on, uh, Twitter. We can go to the next slide. Um, this is just another example of something that, um, popped up in the, uh, last, uh, I think really month, um, this uh, I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it. New neutrology, neutrology, no, yeah, neutrology is what I'm going to go with. Um, but just an example of like when we talk about creating content, um, this is something. If you enjoy this, this is something that you can do. Um, and this account has exploded um, and uh, has tons of um, followers and takes these little slides and really simplifies um, some complex topics. And um, this is something, and I, I want you to, to think about this as you're going through residency, this person's going to be able to include this on their CV. This is a form of educational content. And so if you're considering going into academic medicine, Twitter, educational content like this, this is stuff that can go into a, a teaching portfolio um, as you consider your, your career ahead. Um, we can go next slide. Um, and then again, with uh, different types of content. So um, Dr. Berkowitz is one of the, um, the uh, big uh, tutorial uh, kings, I would say. Um, and so he, he like recent, I think within the last year, like started doing tutorials and now he's um, on uh, this medtutorials.com um, and helps uh, produce content um, for them. But he does uh, neuro specific um, things and really is an expert at simplifying uh, some of these really complex uh, topics. And so this is both a, um, way that you can access education, but also um, a way that um, you can, uh, um, lost my train of thought, uh, an example of, of different uh, content that you can make yourself. Can go to the next slide. So going back to um, you all who are interested in using Twitter and maybe future neurologists, um, we want you to share your stories on Twitter. Um, you can choose to use Twitter however, whichever way you want. Um, we don't dictate the rules. There really aren't any set rules, if, as we've said before. Um, you can decide if you want to use Twitter as a personal account, if you'd like to use it as a professional account. Um, for many of us, we've started to utilize our Twitter accounts for professional purposes because we found there's a really great opportunity for networking there. Um, and as you join and engage with us and become a part of our community, we want to hear your stories. We want you to share um, your accomplishments and things that you're proud of and things that make you excited. Uh, so when the time comes for you to join our neurology community, we definitely want to hear your match day stories, where you're going so we can celebrate your achievements and accomplishments as well. And you'll see on Neuro Twitter, many people share um, their publications, uh, small milestones, different things that they've done uh, along the journey that they'd like to share and celebrate with everyone. So thank you to everyone making it through this presentation. Um, lots of great content for you guys to check out. He, you obviously can follow Justine and Eric and I, if you would like, we tweet a lot of residency related stuff and medical education related stuff. You can check out both of our guides as well. Um, Eric was great and created these bit.ly um, links that take you straight to the guides. The only difference is this is Neuro Twitter Network too. Then definitely, especially if you're rising fourth year medical students applying into neurology, definitely check out the NMH22 Twitter account. 
they tweet out um, info sessions, um, program highlights, which they've been doing a really great job of this year. Um, and then there's also still an opportunity to kind of join the Neuro Twitter network by completing this form as well. I think we have over 400 people signed up. Um, and if you don't currently have a professional Twitter account, we are working on a Twitter onboarding project for Twitter naive patients. We're in the last final stages of having IRB approval, and we're going to be recruiting participants from across the country, both medical students, trainees, and faculty, to do a three module session, 30 minutes each, on how to use Twitter and the nuts and bolts of it, a little bit more in depth than what we talked about today. And it's locally in your own house on your computer, so it'll be your own pace, so you don't have to go anywhere for it either, but that's ways to get involved. Um, it's 8.40, so I think we have now time, Justine, if you go to the next slide, we will go to the question and answer period. Um, so I, I'll just uh, jump on one of, the, one of the ones I saw. Um, somebody asked, and there was a couple questions about interacting with um, program directors on, on Twitter, um, and is it okay to like their tweets, retweet their tweets and not wanting to feel like you're trying to influence um, them or being overbearing? Um, I, I would say my answer to that is if you are, um, uh, if they're putting that content out there, if they're putting educational content, if they're putting um, things about the, the program, um, feel free to like it, feel free to, uh, comment. And, you know, if it's something about the program that you find interesting or cool, it's totally fine to say, you know, even put up a comment and say, Hey, this is really cool. Um, like, where can I find more information about this? And maybe they'll send you a link or maybe they'll say, um, you know, send me a private message. Um, I'd say for program directors, um, I, I would, my personal, view is I would shy away from sending private messages to them um, through Twitter unless you're you're invited to. Um, I don't know if uh, Aaron or Justine have, have thoughts on that or want to take another question. Uh, cool. No, I agree. Um, I think sending private messages to program directors, I, I mean, honestly, at that point, you're probably better off sending an email if you're interested in their program. Uh, it's just a little more formal. Um, and Twitter, in my opinion, is a little more casual. And sometimes I, depending on the program director, you know, they may or may not be open to private messages. Um, when it comes to responding publicly, I saw, I think I saw a question about saying a program director or some other faculty member that doesn't follow you, but you want to tweet back at them or respond to one of their tweets. It honestly depends on the content, especially if it's educational or if you're trying to get to know more about that program. Uh, in my opinion, I think it's perfectly acceptable. I have, um, I know faculty on Twitter that definitely don't follow me that are from different programs, but I've tweeted at them before because I was interested in whatever content it was that they were posting um, or wanted to wanted to just get to know a little more about uh, whatever the tweet was about. So I think it just it's content dependent. And I, I would say that um, I, I didn't know Justine before, like we haven't really ever met in person due to the pandemic, but she tweeted at, at, at me, she tweeted at Aaron when she was applying. Um, we, we didn't think she was overbearing or, or weird or anything like that. So it's totally fine to, to interact with people on Twitter. That's what it's there for, right? It, it makes, it takes those people who were, you know, sort of inaccessible. Um, and if they're making themselves accessible in that way, then yeah, you can comment on, on things and, and like and, and follow and things like that. A great way to kind of get your toes wet is to interact with residents. I think that residents at a lot of these programs, especially if they're active on Twitter, um, are more than happy to answer questions because they want to recruit great people to train at their program and be their colleagues. And that may be a person that you may ask like, hey, um, at program X, you know, program director Y, is it someone I should reach out to on Twitter? Is it someone I should email? And then the residents of the program will know a lot more about the program director in terms of what's acceptable. And they can kind of help guide you as well for a program specific approach. Because like my program is very Twitter friendly. I know that Indiana where I trained at um, is not as heavily involved in Twitter. So again, every program is a little different. So you just need to, I would always err on the side of reaching out to a resident first 
um, cause you're much more likely to get a response, but you're also less likely to do something that could have negative consequences in the future. I second that completely, uh, mostly because like you can tweet at me, for example, all you want, but I have as a neurology intern, I have absolutely zero influence on the residency application process. I have no say in who gets invited to an interview, who doesn't. Um, so if you have questions, like I'm more than happy to answer them, to tell you about my program. Um, and none of that has really any influence or factor in um, the application process at all. So I agree with Aaron to reach out to residents first if you don't know if it's appropriate to reach out to someone Definitely. higher up. Yeah, as a, as a chief last year, um, I had a lot of people send me direct messages, which I was totally, um, totally fine with. Um, to, to end on a, a fun note, um, uh, Justine and Aaron, like you get, you get one, um, one account. If you could tell everyone to follow one account, what's your favorite, uh, neuro Twitter account, uh, Aaron, you go. So I have to be a little partial, um, I love neuromuscular as we kind of referenced earlier. And there are some accounts and there aren't many, but there's definitely one that stands above the rest. And it's actually Dr. Lyle Jones, who's the program director at Mayo Clinic, um, who's not just a phenomenal human being, but he's also a phenomenal tweeter. And it kind of came out of left field. Uh, I think he joined later in the season last year and ever since then, he's been sending out really high quality tweets that is both medical education related, but it's also neuromuscular related, which Eric shies away from, but I'm like, I need more content on Twitter because there aren't as many of us. Um, and I've actually got to meet other neuromuscular faculty and Reds of Fellows at Mayo because of Dr. Jones and they're growing their Twitter presence. And it's been a really great thing to be a part of. Now, there are many other ones, but that's the one that I would highly recommend following. All right, Justine, you're up. I'm super biased, but I would recommend that if you're going into neurology, you want to apply for a neurology residency, follow NMATCH 2022. Um, so I was a part of the group that founded it, but it really has become this huge resource. They post all of the virtual events that residency programs are hosting. Um, they have a lot of information about each of the residency programs, including their Twitter accounts as well. They have a mentorship program set up. They're doing lots of amazing things. Um, the people who now run the account have tons of great ideas and they've really done a phenomenal job with the NMATCH 2022 group. And uh, Justine stole mine, uh, but uh, a, a close second for me would be um, Dr. Tracy Milligan. Um, she was one of the, the first people to really pivot to doing a lot of um, fun education and I think really helped spur a lot of the neuro related education um, that's on, uh, on Twitter. Um, so thank you all um, for, for having us. Yes, so thank you everyone for joining our webinar on how to use Twitter as a medical student going into neurology. This webinar was recorded and once edited, the recording will be available on AAN.com. We will let you know when it is available. So join us for our next webinar on using Twitter effectively in navigating virtual residency recruitment and neurology medical education. Hear from residents broad, broad range of stories using Twitter on Monday, September 13th at 7 to 7.45 p.m. Central Time. Registration is required and you can find the link in the chat and also on Twitter. Thank you for joining us and good night.